Hi everybody, it's Kathy at the Madison Public Library. And today I wanna to talk to you about movies here at the library that you haven't even thought of, I'm sure. Um, we're always thinking about new movies and with COVID coming, um, we have watched um, the Avenger movies more times than we wanted to, but we can't think of anything else that we love. Um, we've watched all those silly, silly movies. We've gone through everything Netflix owns. Um, there's only so much Tiger King and stuff we wanna watch. So I wanted to remind you that there are some wonderful classic movies at the library here in Macedon and also at some of our other libraries that we can get for you. Um, I know a lot of times you think of the classic movies, you think, oh, I have to make sure my kids see um, Sound of Music, make sure they see The Wizard of Oz, make sure they see Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, those things we may, may think of and pull out. Then Christmas comes along and we say, oh, we have to watch Miracle on 34th Street and It's a Wonderful Life. And then that might be where your classic movie thoughts end, but there are so many more. And we're gonna start off with Julia's um, favorite, uh, one of her favorite movies, not her favorite movie, but her, one of hers. It's called The Court Jester. I have not watched this movie, but she talks about it all the time. And one of these days I am going to sit and watch it. I watched a lot of other classic movies and I was done. Um, I ran out of time. This one, if you look at the picture, this is Angela Lansbury. 1956, this movie is older than me. Um, look how young she is. And then Glynis John and uh, Danny Kay. Julia loves this movie. She says it's just fun on so many levels. There's a lot of slapstick. There's a lot of mental thought, mental things going on. It says that um, he's a kind-hearted entertainer who disguises himself as the legendary king of jesters. And he has to go back and forth between different personalities. And it does sound like a lot of fun. I'm sorry that I ran out of time to watch it. But so Court Gesture is always here for you. Another classic that everyone thinks of and they should is To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, Gregory Peck at his absolute best, um, three Academy Awards back in 1962. Um, Boo Radley and uh, just some fantastic things. I always love the fact that this very young blonde Boo Radley is played by um, right Robert Duvall. So I, I've always, I always love that. So just a, a fabulous movie. Everyone loves to kill a mockingbird. We have these four classics, which I was thrilled and sat down and this was the first one I had to go through. Um, we've got two with James Dean. Um, East of Eden and Rebel Without a Cause. He only made three movies. So the only thing that's not on here with him is Giant. Uh, fantastic, fantastic um, Steinbeck. And I don't think anybody famous wrote um, Rebel Without a Cause. And then you have two Tennessee Williams plays, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and A Streetcar Named Desire. This is a fabulous collection. I it was the first one I had to watch. Um, we have The Old Ben-Hur, the one with... Um, Charlton Heston. I watched this and I watched the new Ben-Hur and I'll be honest, I kind of like the new Ben-Hur quite a bit, but this is amazing to watch just because it's so old and the things that they were able to do. Um, so it's a, it, this too is a great movie. Some like it hot because you have to have Marilyn. Um, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Um, just of course a horrifying, terrifying movie. If you think about classic movies, you might be thinking about some war movies. Um, this is A Bridge Too Far. The cast in this movie is unbelievable. I will read to you who is in here. James Kahn, very young James Kahn, um, Michael Caine, Sean Connery, Edward Fox, Elliot Gould, Gene Hackman, Anthony Hopkins, Lawrence Olivier, Ryan O'Neill, Robert Redford, Maximilian Schell, and Liv Ullman. Just Every time you watched it on the screen was some very young famous actor um, or a famous actor when they were very young, I should phrase it. Um, just, it was, it was done in 1977. So you know all these people. Um, it was just a fabulous, fabulous movie to watch. Very long, I think it's three hours long. Very long, very interesting how they did it. Um, but, World War II and they're behind um, German lines and they have the uh, British forces, the Polish forces, 
and the American forces all joining together for this really big um, campaign. I'm sorry, that's the word they used, campaign against Germany. So it a really, really um, a, a classic and fabulous movie in everybody that's in it. Lawrence of Arabia, everyone talks about this movie. Again, three hours has an intermission. I've never seen it. And I will have to be honest with you, I will never finish it. It was beautiful. Um, it was filmed somewhere. Um, it was filmed, I think, in Egypt or, or one of those um, Arabian type countries. It was just the scenery was stunning, but so many scenes of riding on a camel, very long scenes of camel riding. Um, I didn't make it to the to the battle part, to the war part. I just, I didn't make it. But if you are a brave soul, you will. And it is a classic that everyone says you should watch. It won seven Academy Awards in 1962, including Best Picture. And what, and that was the same as The Kill a Mockingbird. So it beat out To Kill a Mockingbird for Best Picture. So there you go. I just couldn't do it. Uh, other classic movies, Westerns. John Wayne. Oh, right. You have to watch your John Wayne movies. We have four of them right here in this wonderful collection. Um, the Shootist, El Dorado, The Sons of Katie Elder, and The Searchers. Um, yeah, John Wayne. He's <laughs> so much John Wayne and just fabulous John Wayne. If you if you like the characters that he plays, you know. And the shootist, if you haven't ever seen the shootist, um, which I think if it wasn't his last movie, it was one of his last movies. It's about, um, it has Lauren McCall in it, um, an old gunfighter who is dying and it's the, and, and it's the last days of his life. And uh, he does a beautiful job, just a, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful job in, in this. It's, it's not your typical John Wayne and it was just fabulous to watch. Um, the Searchers is a very, is one of his famous ones. Uh, the Sons of Katie Elder had a fabulous cast in it. Um, let me see who's in it. Uh, I can't even think of them off the top of my head. This is, uh, El Dorado has Robert Mitchum in it. Sons of AD, uh, Katie Elder has Dean Martin, has his brother. Just a, again, another, just John Wayne. That's all I can say. Lots and lots of John Wayne and we love him. Uh, and then not in that collection was the Cowboys. Again, such a nice movie. Um, John Wayne in a different kind of character, still playing the old salty character, but he has to, uh, he needs a, he, he doesn't have any, <coughs> excuse me. He doesn't have any men to run his herd for him and bring it to market on a cattle drive. And so he hires young boys. And um, it's a beautiful story of him as a, as a dad really um, just fabulous. And they said that he loved making this movie. He, he loved this part. Um, a very, very young um, Robert Carradine is in here. It's just, a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. And you cannot talk Westerns to Kathy without talking about the best Western ever, 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 The Magnificent Seven, the original of The Magnificent Seven with Yul Brenner and Steve McQueen with Eli Wallach playing the bad guy. Um, probably not considered politically correct anymore. Eli Wallach was not um, a, a Mexican and they you know, just covered him up and told him that he was. But just um, this cast, this cast, it's got Jane, James Colburn in it. Um, who else am I looking for here? Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughn, just, just a wonderful, wonderful movie. And funny, parts of this movie are so funny. Steve McQueen is just wonderful in this. Um, and I was so excited to see the new one come out a, a few years ago. They changed the story. The humor is very different. It's not the same. So the magnificent, best, best, best Western ever. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're going to talk about westerns, you need to talk about spaghetti westerns and Clint Eastwood, High Plains Drifters, the only one that I could find on our shelf. 
I started watching it. Um, I remember thinking that spaghetti westerns were fabulous when I was a young child, hang them high. Um, I did not make it through this movie. Uh, I barely made it through the first 10 minutes of this movie, but it's out there for you. Um, some different ideas about relationships. So I, I turned it off, but it's here. You might want to give it a shot. Maybe you will be a lot more tolerant than I was. But there, again, whole opening scene, him just riding his horse. We're, I'm more an Avengers person where there's a little bit more action, but still we have it. And then if you're gonna go back and think about classics, you're probably gonna think about the Frankenstein collection, right? We've got Frankenstein, the bride of Frankenstein, son of Frankenstein, ghost of Frankenstein, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, house of Frankenstein, house of Dracula, and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. There's not a Frankenstein movie back in the day that is not included here. We have, like I said, we have the Wolfman, all of them. And uh, Lon Chaney, just Boris Karloff, just Frankenstein. The classic, original, great Frankenstein movies. And then a sad thing real, I realized, I'm very old. And so movies that I watched as a teenager and in college are now considered classics. So if you're gonna talk about Frankenstein, you have to talk about Young Frankenstein, which is considered a classic now. So good, so fabulous. I cannot do the imitations like other people can, but um, funniest comedy of all time, they say. Just, it's Young Frankenstein. You have to watch it. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. And then if you're talking Mel Brooks and classics, Blazing Saddles, which surprised me a little bit. I forgot um, I forgot about some of the words that are in this movie, <laughs> but uh, that they use these words a lot. And I think that was the whole purpose of the movie, but it still caught me by surprise. Um, having haven't watched it in a long time. Do not watch it on television um, if they ever even show it because you have to watch the totally um, raunchy unedited version. So there are a bunch of our classic movies that we have and there are, if you, I'm sure you'll think of dozens and dozens more that you might wanna get and uh, watch, at, watch and we can get them from other libraries for you. So I had a lot of fun um, watching these movies and, re and reminding myself of how great my youth was. So anyway, have a good one. And uh, let us know if you want to borrow any of these or if you want to borrow them from another library. And you have a great day. Bye-bye.